Well, good afternoon. This is just a, a real quick uh, a video, I think, because uh, uh, I have some hardware that I got from uh, the enormous equipment uh, auction. But now that I can see the uh, out of service tag, uh, I think that uh, this is one of those cases where I told you um, sometimes you're the bat, sometimes you're the ball. I think uh, this is one of those cases where I'm going to be the, the ball on this. Anyway, uh, the two pieces of kit that I have here are a uh, E4419B and a, uh, you know, I can't remember what model uh, it is, but a uh, 9000 series um, power center. So let's just uh, open this up. The reason I bought this guy, and here you can see the uh, the E forty four nineteen B. The reason I bought this is because it is basically a plug in replacement for the four three eight A, and um, you can see that uh, uh, these guys are uh, you know you plug in your two uh, cables there. Uh, you can set it into a E438A mode and then it'll run uh, the GPIB commands directly uh, as though it is a, uh, uh, a 438A. Uh, but now, because it's the later version, it'll actually read the, uh, the data off the, the items there. Now, let's zoom in a little bit and hopefully you'll, go, you'll be able to see what's written on the the service tag here but uh, what we can see is this is a you know they're saying that uh, it is a power meter they've checked it out they've looked at it uh, in 2016 let me get over here let me see that probably just zoom out a little bit you know that um, it has a bad channel B function bad main circuit board two costs of repair confirmed with Harry bad power board as well so I'm suspecting that this thing is going to be uh, pretty damn well dead and I can have a look at the back of it and you can see the uh, the little back uh, rubber the thing here it looks like somebody's taken a, a screw out of it or dropped it or or something but uh, you know I'm, they've uh, opened it up and then whacked another seal over the top of it so probably already been used as a parts unit so let's uh, just grab a the appropriate screwdriver there let's take that back off you know, and this should just slide out now oh, zoom back out take a look what we're going to get uh, inside here yep. we can see the uh, uh, system is doesn't look like they've gone out and swapped anything but you know you can see the individual uh, boards here that run uh, each channel you know, so they take the uh, cable in from the front, each channel comes in one of these individual boards. It's very similar to um, oh, how my other uh, unit, because uh, I have a, uh, an E4418 uh, machine as well. So, sort of looks like they haven't gone through and swapped a bunch of stuff. Let's see if we can pop that top off. And yeah, it looks very much. No, it looks very much like it's all original. I prop they just tested it. So hopefully, I might be able to cobble together because I would suspect that for my E forty four eighteen, that the, the power supply would probably be identical, and then uh, uh, the boards are probably going to be the same. I don't know about the motherboard. Anyway, let's uh, 
whack this cover back on. Oh, sorry. It's my, my alarm system is just going off. Hang on. Okay, so let's uh, plug it in and see what happens. Okay. Oh, look at a light there. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if you saw that properly but uh, it passed all of its self-tests. Hmm. Okay. Okay, well, let's uh, turn this off and we'll hook up our power meter to it and we'll see, uh, see what happens. I'll put the cover and everything back on it and you know, we'll see what goes on. Okay, so here we have, we have it hooked up, I have a couple of the uh, cables in and you'll probably remember my uh, 11683 range calibrator from uh, other videos. So let's uh, turn this guy on. It's uh, Friday afternoon here, so the drink of choice is uh, a little bit of a homemade Moscow Mule. You'll see passing, 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 and it's all passed. So... Okay, so it's detected that it's got a sensor in there, so let's go in and zero A. Okay, now I have it set to zero dBm here. So, um, so we do the cal, and then uh, I think 100 is right. I'm not sure. I'd have to check to see uh, how you put it in a special mode um, for the 4388A to work with this. So I don't know about this. I'll have to read the manual. But let's just, you know, uh, let's just go with that for the moment. And let's turn the calibrator on. Okay. 0 dBm. Seems minus 5. Minus 10, 5, 15, 20, minus 15, minus 20. Yeah. All right. Well, channel A seems to be okay. Hmm. Let's uh, just unplug channel A. Take uh, channel B here. Let's put channel B in. Okay. Okay, so now it's zero B. Okay, let's turn it on. You know what? That's five, ten, fifteen, twenty. That seems to work with the um, um, range calibrator. So, you don't know. I might be uh, a little bit more of the, the bat than the ball in this particular case. Hmm. Okay. Let's try it with a sensor. Let me set that up. Okay, so now we have it set up again. Uh, this time what we have here is for an E9301A. Uh, power sensor and this uh, power sensor I've had uh, calibrated by Keysight 
So I'm not necessarily guaranteed because these are open loop systems. So it all comes down to the, to the accuracy of that uh, power ref. But here we go. Okay, so it's reading the um, calibration factors from the, the sensor. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to uh, go in here. I'm going to put this on the power reference. There we go. And now it's zero, and we'll zero A. Okay, we'll cal A. And you notice how it doesn't list the cal factor because it can read that straight from the thing. And you'll see that the actual power reference slide has come on. So now we're calibrated. So now I have my uh, 8657B uh, with a 1 gigahertz signal coming out at minus 15 dBm. And so that's on uh, uh, this connection here. So we put that in there. Yeah, it's going to be a little off. There's a little loss in the cable. I'll take minus 16 dB. So I think we're seeing that that works uh, pretty well. Okay, let's uh, swap this and uh, now we'll take it over here from channel B. You'll notice that the reference data has come back. So we'll zero and calibrate again because we're on a different channel. So we want to make sure it actually zeroes with a sensor. Okay, so it read all that. So it's zero, zero B. Okay, so let's calibrate B. Little lights come on. Oh, I forgot to set the. Did I set the frequency when I checked um, channel A? I'm not sure I did. Okay, let's set the frequency. B frequency and we're going to make it one gigahertz It'll make a lot of difference but that seems to be working as well okay well there you have it looks like uh, another mystery uh, service tag uh, showing uh, you know faults that uh, aren't actually in the instrument okay well with those disconnected let's take a quick look at uh, the sensor okay so here we have the sensor here Now, partially, the, the reason I wanted to get this sensor, let's open it right up, was that um, this sensor is uh, a 4412, but um, it actually goes, if you see, if we can zoom in a bit, you'll see it goes from 10 meg to 18 gigahertz. 
whereas uh, this guy's a very good sensor but it goes from 10 meg to 6 gigahertz so I had a little bit broader range on this guy uh, uh, for working on some stuff so uh, now I can uh, if we also have this guy will load in the uh, cow factors here so you know it doesn't have any markings on it that are showing that uh, it's dead or anything it was due for a calibration uh, December on the 16th and uh, 2016 so all right well let's uh, plug it in see what it does okay so I have it uh, plugged in now so let's uh, turn the meter on I didn't need to turn it off to change the sensor heads but I want to see if it uh, boots you know if it's maybe there was a partial boot problem or something but it's reading the sensor okay so that's Whack it on to the uh, okay, so we got it onto the reference there, so it's zero A. Cal A Okay That's a pretty decent sign uh, if they zero on Cal uh, I found, tended to find that these uh, sensors are actually uh, uh, pretty good if they zero on Cal and we turn the frequency on and A frequency and we're gonna that again I'm willing to give that uh, give that a pass let me you know so that's at one gigahertz let's uh, let me see turn on one of my uh, 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 other signal generators and try and get a signal that's a little higher Alright, so here I have my uh, uh, 8672A uh, set up and we set it at uh, 18 gigahertz and around minus 10 dB on the uh, front of the unit so I've got about 2 meters of uh, cable you know got 2 meters of cable a couple of connectors Let's go uh, set the frequency, and this guy will set to 18 gigahertz now. Yeah, I'm sort of happy with that. You know, minus 13 dB. You know, well, there you go. Sometimes you're the bat, sometimes you're the ball. Sometimes you uh, think you're the ball, and you suddenly discover you're the bat. Sometimes you uh, realize that that's a silly analogy and you need to get a better one. Anyway, uh, we'll do a, uh, another look-see at this and maybe a, try a bit of a calibration with uh, the range calibrator and that just to make sure it all uh, heats spec. Uh, but overall, pretty happy with it. Uh, hopefully the next video will be me getting back to my E4406A now that I'm back in country. And uh, we can see if I can get that uh, damn uh, relay fixed. All right. Liked it, give it a thumbs up, and I'll catch you again later. Bye.